loud. There you go. All right, now we're recording, so everyone better behave. <laughs> we, we always behave, don't yeah. we? Mm-hmm. Oh, anyway. Okay. Yeah, so we talked about the TTF. So, well, first, when is our expiration? Uh, I've heard... Okay. Uh, I think someone showed me Uh, yeah, I think he was on that. the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hudson, I muted you. <laughs> Wait, he what? Can, he can okay. unmute himself. I thought he, he was talking on the phone to someone, right? Um, okay. All right. I am, let me see if I can make you co host. Oh, you're just going to try that again? Yeah. Technical difficulties, please bear oh, with us. That seems to have worked. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So, go, uh, yeah, I'm just going to shut up now. Absolutely. Welcome, everyone, to the, um, I don't know, 42nd uh, user group meeting. 12? How many have we had? I have no idea. I've run about seven of them. I have to look back through my files. Yeah, I can look at them on the YouTube. <laughs> Today is N plus one. That's what we'll say. <laughs> that anyway, will always um, be accurate. <laughs> it will. Uh, and we'll, yeah, I'm sure over the next couple of minutes or maybe a few more folks come in. In any case, today is, well, do we have any news ahead of time? Oh, we do have one piece of news. It is my birthday on Sunday. Just... Well, happy early birthday. Oh, yeah. Getting close. Wow. Um, uh, that is, it is not a special round of number one or anything. So anyway, um, but I thought I just. Is it a prime number? Hmm. No, it's not. Probably not, wait, no. Wait, wait. <laughs> Will you be in your prime? I like to make that joke every time nope. I'm a prime. <laughs> I'm in my prime. <laughs> Hell yeah. So last year was 51. That was 17 times three, right? Mm -hmm. um, 52 is, well, obviously it's even. Duh. Yeah. So I was starting way. at like 17 and 13 and all the weird ones are working back. Like, wait, 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 two. Two goes into no, it. No, cannot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sometimes you should just start with the, the easy side of things, right? Two? Oh, yeah, it's it's not prime. <laughs> well, I can, can I say a happy thing? So we had our first PAX contest, which wrapped up on Friday. Yeah, and even though Mark did not ultimately submit anything, sad face. It's okay, we understand there's other work things, but we had five packs entered. So that's exciting. So they're getting just sort of like reviewing them for security and such. Um, and then we'll open up um, voting for community community voted best pack um, probably next week once we get through the all the security validation and such. Ah, yeah. Make sure they're not hackers trying to steal all our stuff, yes. right? Yes. Or yes. however that works. Yes. <laughs> um, no, great. I actually had a pack I was working on, but I, I'm no, 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 it's just not gonna. <laughs> we'll probably do it again. Probably. Well, oh, that'll again. be fun. That'll yeah. be fun. That kind of way to just round folks up, but um, yeah, just try to get continued involvement in it, right? Um, exactly. Cool. That'd be good. So we have five packs we're going to have to pick from in the next week or so, and yep. hopefully, yeah. are you guys going to set up test systems to do whatever it is the pack does so we can actually log into a sandbox and play with them? Ish. Well, okay, Rachel's saying no. <laughs> I'm saying ish. <laughs> I was like, I'm you saying, might know more than me. <laughs> I was like, nah. The, the, so what we what you can do is you can deploy packs in a Cribble cloud instance, in a stream cloud instance. So you can do that. And we were talking about like using the sample data from packs to drop that into cloud instances so people could play around with sample data for the technologies that they care about without having to upload their own into the cloud. Right. So that is... That's a thing we're trying to figure out how to do. Like that in general, because Splunk used to do that way back in the day, if I remember correctly, until someone said, oh my gosh, we've got all these customers putting stuff up in, and oh, 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 we can't let them do this. <laughs> that story's from Nick, by the way. <laughs> we're, we're trying to take some lessons learned and apply them here. Good, you should apply some lessons on that one. Yes. It's, it's <laughs> anyway, great. Uh, so if that actually covers all of the current um, administrative talk, 
<laughs> then I guess we could jump right on into our talk of the day, which is using Cribble Stream and Edge in AWS, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I will hand it over to Mark. Actually, Mark, you can probably just like share your screen and go. I, I'm pretty sure we don't seem to have the, the controls in place to stop that. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them or they'll click that button too in there. And <laughs> All right. Can we hear you though? I hope so. Oh, yes, we do. We can hear you well. All right, take it away. I will interrupt you if you go way too long, but otherwise time is yours. <laughs> yeah, so it won't be a too long presentation. I was asked to keep it short and smooth, but uh, let's get started. A little bit about our company. Fresenius is in the healthcare business. We are based out of Bad Homburg, probably a city you have never heard of, which is near Frankfurt in Germany. We provide services in the area of dialysis, but we also have hospital, inpatient, outpatient care, uh, pretty much the whole life cycle of dial dialysis. The company was founded 1912 as a small local pharmacy. And now we have 320,000 employees worldwide and are present in about 70% of all countries. You only know about us when you need us. We are one of those companies, even we are medical. Um, well, if you need dialysis, you have two vendors of choice. We are one of them. Fresenius Medical Care is the largest business unit of Fresenius Group. And we have been asked to build out a new worldwide SIEM infrastructure, which respects legal privacy and compliance for all the countries around the world where we do business. So what did we come up? You will see a very easy chart. We had to divide the world in four regions, in four continents. And the reason we opted for four and not five has to do with the fact that our presence in Africa is still very low. So we did what most other companies do as well. We call it EMEA, which means Europe, Middle East, and Africa as one of our regions. South America, the other one, APAC, the third one, and North America, our key region, is the initial one. For data privacy reasons, we were asked that healthcare data and privacy relevant data is being stored only within the region. What that means is we are not allowed any longer to send syslog data from Germany to US. Syslog data from Germany needs to be processed in Europe. And further than that, it's not only the collecting of the data, it's also the processing. What that meant for us is we are one of the better Splunk customers we are currently running with five separate Splunk clouds, one per region, just to be able to accommodate this requirement. Because management has decided that we will be cloud first, we have taken the opportunity when we implemented Cripple to go cloud first. And we have decided to build everything out in AWS. Our AWS setup is in a way that we have one global shared account for network services or network security services. In that shared network security services account, we run all critical security gear like Syslog, Cripple, virtual firewalls, uh, DNS services, you name it, we run it there. Because of our requirement to separate traffic and everything by region, we have to run 
every system dedicated for every region. Because it's cloud and fault tolerance is important, we had to make sure that everything is being set up at least in two availability zones in every region. So you see a little bit our environment is growing and growing. Talking a little bit more about AWS. So our AWS instance is currently running in North Virginia. We are running fully in two availability zones. The Cripple leader is also running in one of the availability zones, but we have done a setup that we can automatically spin up a second one in the second availability zone when required. We currently have ASGs in that car in that chart stands for auto scaling groups. That means we have set up our environment in a way that it grows when we need more capacity and it shrinks again when we need less capacity. Our minimum capacity for every worker group is four devices, but we had cases where we already run up to 12. We have split our worker groups for internal facing systems and we have a separate worker group for external facing systems like hack, webhooks, and whatever. On the left side, you also see we have additional worker groups which we pushed out into separate business units. And the idea behind is we don't want to have hundreds of Windows servers using a small wide area network link to send to our cripple workers. We want to do first consolidate our traffic there in the sites and then have a single point of transfer from worker to worker, just to make it easy on us and all the security teams. We are one of the early adopters of edge fleets, and we currently have a limited amount of edge fleets in Windows and Linux in North America, with the goal to deploy that to our whole uh, user base of 65,000 65, users. The key sources, and I just mentioned some of them here, is all about Palo Alto log files, and we appreciate the good pack we have from Cripple. Linux hosts, Windows hosts, and a lot of cloud business in Azure, Office 365, and AWS. But here the same. We need to separate all those environments for privacy reasons into regions. And that's a nightmare which we started two years ago and it will probably take another two years to be completed. All the data afterwards is sent to Splunk Cloud in North America. And you see a similar setup now in APAC, which is a little bit smaller. That's just about 20,000 users. And we are currently building out South America and EMEA. On the bottom of the chart, you see we use a globally shared Redis instance. And we use the Redis instance to consolidate our threat information and our user provisioning information so we can share that information across all the cripple instances without needing to keep the data separate in every region. So what was good? Deploying both cripple and cloud as a cloud-based service gave us the flexibility we needed to onboard an unknown number of systems and devices. Leveraging AWS spot instances and auto scaling groups allows us to scale up and down as needed. And as I said before, with 12 workers running in parallel. For us, the ability to group workers by use case like syslog, webhooks, internal, external, replay, 
allows us pretty much to to have the flexibility we need to be fast and flexible. The AWS based infrastructure has worked, I would say, pretty well. We had some smaller boo boos, but nothing really to talk about. We have deployed the whole setup with cloud formation templates. And we already have addressed with Cripple that we would love to see Terraform support in the close future because Terraform is already used internal inside Cripple. We have been able to normalize and archive all critical data for long-term retention in AWS S3 and Glacier. And we can play back and search now as needed. We no longer yeah. use Splunk. Yeah. We no longer use Splunk for that. We use now AWS, which dramatically reduced our storage cost in Splunk Cloud. The integration of Cripple and Git was an additional big plus for us. We have been able to test disaster recovery and all kinds of outage scenarios. And the Cripple infrastructure is just behaving as it should. The bad. We have scripted Cripple deployment in AWS using CloudFormation templates. The problem with CloudFormation templates and per se running an infrastructure in AWS is you need to be mindful of how many fixed IP addresses you use and where you use the fixed IP addresses. Like, are you using them on the load balancer? Are you using them on the backend instances? And the challenge we are facing is there's only a limited amount of those addresses available. And AWS becomes more restrictive in getting them away. Proper locking for our 150 plus AWS accounts is a major task. And we have not yet found the best way to do that at scale. The main issue here is our privacy aware setup. We cannot use global functions like global cloud trail, which would make it easier. We need to break everything out into every region and then do the same for every AWS account and for every source inside an AWS account. Multiple options for integration with AWS and Splunk can create some confusion. And uh, for me, it's a little bit like in the supermarket. I have multiple ways in Cripple how I can integrate with AWS and in Splunk. And I'm not always sure we are doing the right thing at the right place. As I mentioned before, there should be out of the box cloud formation Terraform templates. So you can have an easy customized deployment experience. A little hint to my Cripple friends, if we could mimic Splunk's new onboarding manager and at least make it easier to onboard Azure, AWS and GPC, that would be a very good start. I'm aware tomorrow in the community session, there will be some talk about AWS VPC flow to get that discussion started, but we need it now and not only in a few months. Something else which is very prominent in the healthcare area is we need support for OCI. Oracle's new cloud service is now hosting one of the major medical business applications, Cerner, and pretty much OCI grew from 5 million, I think, revenue to now about 20, 30 million revenue, a, a billion a year. So I think that should be considered. The ugly. 
there's not many bad things about Cripple, but migrating from Splunk on-prem Splunk Cloud to a Cripple Splunk Cloud setup sounds easy, but the devil is in the detail. We have over 150 different sources and we realized that we probably need about 70 plus packs just to be able to integrate what we have integrated today via Cripple. We also need to find a better solution about REST and SOAP and some of the custom scripts we have built. There is no Splunk Cloud available in LATAM. That was a surprise we heard from Splunk when we wanted to buy it, which means our in our environment, our LATAM Cloud physically sits now in Europe because they have similar privacy uh, requirements. Many new cloud-based services like Aruba Cloud, Meraki Cloud, and a few others only provide integration options for REST, Hack, or Webhooks. The problem with the current REST API of Cripple is it's stateless, which limits a lot what can be done and how you can up, how you can track new data coming in. The other issue, and we are Splunk shop, is there are no good Splunk applications for those providers either. So we are currently spending a lot of time producing a framework. What can you do to integrate such systems directly into Cripple? And while I had hoped that this would end up in a pack before the deadline, Erin, it was simply not possible. Leveraging Splunk Federated Search across four Splunk clouds does not really hold up to the expectations we had in version nine. While it works well with very basic SPL commands and searches, support for more complex commands like TSTAT and enterprise security is still lacking. But our hope is Cripple Search will make the match happen for us. The only comment I really have for Cripple is we have chosen to go and run Cripple in our own AWS clouds because there are no Cripple clouds outside of North America. Should that ever be a possibility, we might revisit our architecture. But for now, we need to stick with that kind of complex setup. Well, and IT would say the end. <laughs> right. Oh, I see if I can remember that question. Does anybody have any questions? Because like you don't want to listen to me talk. You did mention that you're using Splunk Federated Search DFS. Yes. I thought this is discontinued product. It is not. Okay. Can you elaborate more on that experience? What, what, what are the challenges there? We're learning, as, as you can tell. So we're trying to fix it. So uh, uh, I think, I think in, the, in the Splunk context is our, our, our intention initially was that everything you can do in SPL in a normal search window would be working with federated search across all our four clouds. Um, a very basic search that works fine, but the moment your SPL language becomes a little bit more complex, uh, you get either timeouts, you get delays from certain instances. And if you use more complex commands, it didn't work at all. If you look now in version nine, version nine, uh, allows you now to search federated and also search uh, S3 buckets um, in JSON format, ring, ring, sound the bell. 
So uh, even that experience, I would say it's working. It does not give us yet all the use cases we wanted to support. That's why we hope that working with Cripple to make Cripple search a good or better product will be the, will be the way forward. Do you think that, that the, the issue with the federated search is really just because of the delays between search head and indexers across different regions and things? Or do you think it's just some fundamental, they haven't finished that yet? It's just half baked or some of both. If you ask me, I think it's evolving as they go from version to version. Right. Um, it's, I think they also, they also realize that Splunk customers no longer want to pay a fortune to keep warm data searchable in their environment. So they need to act. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with Splunk Cloud is um, there's only so much you can control on the front end, and there's only so much they can control on the back end. As an example, we think they no longer provide services in South America because it, the, the um, latency down there is so bad, even for us, that you cannot never have such a centralized consolidated experience working nicely. Oh, uh, you said you use Glacier as well. You push out to S3 and then also to Glacier. I use Glacier for my own personal backups, like for my house. Um, it's one of my three, four backups. Anyway, <laughs> uh, have you guys had to restore anything out of Glacier and what's that experience like? Cause that's slow and possibly expensive. Or is that your like final place? Like it's here, if we really need it, we can break that glass and get it out. It's that there are multiple options. And I think the decision, the decision you need to make for yourself is what you want to achieve with your archiving policy. Right. Our archiving policy is we have 180 days and we want to do long time legal archive. Long time okay. legal archive pretty much for us is I need to have the data somewhere. It needs right. to be searchable for up to six years. Yeah. And then I don't really care then I don't really care how, how fast it comes back. Right, right, within reason anyway, right. Then there's the other use case where it's cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is, let's say the period from 180 days to 360 days is where sporadically you need to look if something specific happened before. And that is the data where we apply a different glacier policy, which allows us faster retrieval, okay. but we pay a higher price. Right. Okay. Everything older than a year, it's pretty much it will it can take up to two days, but right. we get it. Yeah, but that's probably fine. And even if it costs you something, then you'd be willing to pay that during the the legal process, and you know you'd have a bucket of money. Like ah, yep, we got compliance needs. We just do it. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was just wondering. I saw that and I'm like, I use Glacier and I'm just hoping I never have to restore from it. But, <laughs> but you know, also for 70 ter or 70 gigabytes, it's like, whatever, come back. In a I wish. To, you know, it'll <laughs> be back in a day or two and cost me 20 bucks. Ah, fine. Um, well, that was all questions I had. Did anybody else have any other ones? Yes, I also love the Git usage. Somebody mentioned that. I um, totally love the Git usage when it came out. Like when you guys, because that came out in the beginning, but now you can enter it. Yeah. Git is amazing. It's so much fun to be able to go, ha ha, I broke this. Let's um, <clears throat> <laughs> not go dig around in my own file system to find the pieces I need to put back. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you much then, unless anybody, oh, raised hand. Sorry, last second. I know everybody's ready to bounce. Um, <laughs> quick, quick question for you, Mark. So I'm actually work, about to work on a project, just finished, push, pushed out the SAO where it's, it's global as well. And I have the customers in four regions. 
Um, and I know the UK and the and the EU regions, uh, you know, dealing with GDPR and all that good stuff. We were talking about separating everything else out as well um, and putting a leader node in every single region. Is that what you were talking about with the Kribble that's cloud? What we, that's what we did, yeah. Okay, cool. So you just you just have to spin up your own leader node. So you got a hybrid environment, right? I'm assuming we have a hybrid environment, but we run everything in our private AWS cloud. Got it. Okay, cool. Just making sure. I was making sure that's what you meant when you were having to take care of yourself. Thank you. You can find me on Slack if you have more questions. Sure. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. I just wanted to ask because I I did, I hadn't seen that and you know I'm not like super technical but I hadn't seen that idea of using the Redis enrichment before you go out to each of the regions so that's cool I was kind of wondering how many other people are using Redis or not because I hear like some people don't like it's too much for them to handle I know you have a big environment Mark uh, other folks on the call using Redis or. I guess not. I see no well XPAC, I'm pretty sure is, but I don't know if it's in production. I just know he's doing that himself, right? Yeah, science project -y. <clears throat> But I think I think red, I think the advantage for us of using red is, is multiple fold. First of all, um, our enrichment data is quite first of all, we have to consolidate all our enrichment data from all the sources at one single place. <laughs> Yeah. We use Cripple pretty much to consolidate that data now. And then we write it into one Redis instance and we push it out. The idea behind is by using Redis is other systems can also use that data. Got it. Right. Thanks. I need to write down a note to go look into the Redis stuff again because I forgot that was going to be something I wanted to do as soon as I found time. So I know where to find information though. <laughs> we'll be good. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, if that's it for the speaker bits, we can continue on. Do we have any other administrative news that we were thinking of while that was all happening? I forgot to mention. Um, I think I... Uh, mentioned this in Slack, but uh, I want to make sure folks who are attending, if anyone's attending Black Hat or uh, DEF CON or both knows about CribbleCon. Um, and if you, uh, let's see, put the link in random very recently. So take a look in there if you want to register. And uh, there it is have, there. maybe it'll be as crowded as the, as the one at Conf, <laughs> but I don't know. We'll find out. That'll be fun to see. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So who has dice? I um, may have brought some. Maybe. Do I need to go grab them? I'll go try. Um, I mean, you know, if Here you want to do this fairly. I will start this process. I mean, I can always kick up my roll 20 and just have it roll too. I it's mean, true. Whatever. Actually, I should install oh. I should install the dice roller and slap. I know, and just then we can just do it. Wait, I have dice. I will. What size do, do I need? You need a D10. <laughs> I need a D10. All right. Lucky number two gets it. Number Ooh. two? Well, that's actually Mark. <laughs> So Mark gets swag. Well, that makes sense yeah. given you know the amount of effort he put into this particular exactly. meeting. Uh, exactly. Do you want to, Aaron? Do you think we should roll another, or do you think one's good? I'm always looking for second opinions on these things. Um, I think we can roll another. I'm sort of like you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> swag is for swag. Seven. It is. Seven. A seven, seven. is. By the way, I don't even think mine are ordered the same as what you see anyhow. Yeah, so. I use the participants list and I take a screenshot of it and then I cross perfect. out all of the cribbling. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, because I'm totally like of the, like, I mean, I can do this and I can't even cheat because I really don't see the same thing you see. Let's see, what's the Well, the, uh, <laughs> the, the suspense might be killing you, but it is Chesky Herskowitz. Hey! Did you, did you win last time? I seem to remember, but in any case, <laughs> win again <laughs> you win again <laughs> so uh both of you i didn't win yet okay well then perfect. perfect even better uh 
I will send you, or perhaps I will ask someone else to do this because I don't even know how to do this anymore. Um, but you will receive a <laughs> swag package if you DM me with your mailing address and your shirt size. And we will send you a package. Ooh, All right. Um, do they get the, the traditional what streams are made of with the I cannot say. Oh, no. I, I, ah. I, I, I have to check and see what's available because those are those are older. Those are I classic. Know. I know it's a classic. I'm gonna have to take really good care of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not getting another one, I don't think. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure. All right. Well, cool, everybody. Uh any other uh any other business, anything else? Um, who who is interested in presenting next time? That's right. Always looking for people. Maybe we should make it like the people who win the raffle have to talk next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, you have that policy. They don't have to give anything long. It could just be 10 minutes or something. Yeah. It's you know, here's easy. things I was fooling around with the other day and I thought was neat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty much what all my talks are. I'll, I'll let you do the hassling then. <laughs> I'll, I'll, hass, I'll hassle some folks over the next few weeks and get somebody lined up. All righty. Okay, y'all. Right. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you, see you in, in a month. A little less. A month? Yep, in a month. Something right around Thank there. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate Thank it. you very much, Mark. Rich. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. It's awesome. See you, everybody. Ciao. Bye.